So I'm going to be talking about content marketing, which, interestingly enough, this slide is pretty much the only one where you're ever going to see WordPress in the next 25 minutes. But content marketing is fundamental to what we're doing in WordPress. Content marketing is one of the ways in which we can actually achieve some pretty brilliant marketing and use WordPress to power it. So my guess is more than half of you are going to be engaged in content marketing in one way or another. How many of you blog even once? That's pretty much the majority of the room in here. So great, almost everyone in here is doing content marketing already. Perfect. But there are a lot of things that you could do to do it better. And there are a few simple things that you could really do to make it infinitely better. And that's what I'm going to focus on today. Before I get into that, who am I then? My name is Eric Bernskild, and I'm a digital strategist, consultant, speaker economist, and businessman. What I do on a daily basis is I'm a digital strategist, which means I work with businesses to help bring their entire digital portfolio together, whether it be business strategy, whether it's building a website that fulfills some interesting business use, coupling together systems with integrations, or creating beautiful design. And I do that as managing director of Burns Guild Media. And we're a global full-service boutique digital agency. And basically, that's what we do all day. So whether it's business strategy, website building, integration building, or anything you can think about, um, that's what we do. And interestingly enough, of course, we also do our content marketing. So what then is content marketing really done right? Well, you see, what's interesting about content marketing is Everyone can do it. Almost everyone can do content marketing, and almost everyone is doing content marketing as well. But how many of you are seeing great results from all of your posts that you publish? Or are you just publishing? There are actually over 3 million blog posts that are published every single day. Can you believe that number? Over 3 million. And this is a bit of an unsure margin, because we can count Part of the stat comes from WordPress.com, which are seeing close to 2 million posts published every day. 2 million just on WordPress.com. And then we got .org, and we've got all the other content that's being published. So when you post your fantastic, beautifully crafted article, you're competing with 1,999,999 other posts that day, or even 2,999,999 posts. How does that make you feel? Excited? Scary? So of course we want to do this right, and we want to use the tricks we have to do it even better. Starting to blog is really, really easy. It's easy for us to get started. And you might argue with me saying, oh, well, coming up with a topic, that's, that's pretty tricky. I can sit down and I think I'm going to do a great blog post today. And then you sit down, start writing as like writer's blog. I can't think of a title. I can't think of anything to write. But that's really not the tricky part. The tricky part is actually nailing it. It's easy to publish a post, but it's really tricky to make it effective. How many of you who said, raised your hands to, I'm blogging or I've published a blog post, can also answer to the fact that I quit blogging. I didn't have the time. It didn't, you know, didn't feel good after a while. Right? How many restarted again? How many quit again, restarted again? I'm seeing people waving at me, so yes. So the thing here is, it's really easy to get started, but it's really, really difficult to follow through. And how many of you quit because you didn't see the results you wanted from your blog posts? It can be tricky to gain that following, how to gain the actual um, marketing efforts and the statistics and the success that you need for this to really be excellent and good. And that's why content marketing sometimes gets a bit of a bad rep. So fundamentally, content marketing is about actually persuading people to buy via content. So we all know a salesman calls us up on the phone and says, hey, I'd like you to, you know, this is our company, please listen to me while I pitch us. Right? And all we do is say, oh, not again, just hang up the phone. So of course, content marketing has come along and said, well, if we publish a lot of great articles and we show that we're experts in the field that we're doing, then of course, at the end of the day, people are going to think that we're the excellent party and they're going to buy from us. But you know what's missing in that equation? It, it's perfect. It's a perfect world. But we actually have to get through the noise, the other 2,999,999 posts that day to actually be seen, 
constantly and frequently, and that's really tricky. I'm going to focus on three key areas. And that's because we don't have a lot of time today. So I'm going to focus on tr three key areas. It's conversion, it's reach, and it's analytics. I'm going to talk to you and, and explain a couple of points in each of these areas that can really, really help you that people are most fundamentally missing. So let's start out by conversion. Conversion is basically defined. It's something when a user does something on a page that's favorable to us, that's a conversion. This can be purchasing something. It'll be signing up for our email newsletter. It might even be submitting a contact form, becoming a lead to our business. It could even be as simple as clicking a button somewhere that leads us to a page where they read something. That could be a conversion. It's really broadly defined. And of course, conversion is why we're doing this. If people don't convert, as we say, then why are we publishing the content? Sure, it's nice to write. Sure, it's nice that people read what we have to say. But at the end of the day, we actually want people to do something. And the creating engagement part is, I think, the crucial aspect to conversion. We need to create an engagement with the readers. They need to feel involved in what we're writing, and they need to feel that we're really including them in the process. And the best way to do that is clear copywriting. Now, you might wonder, why isn't copywriting a whole area of itself? Because it's called content marketing. Copywriting must be the most important part. Well, it is a part. And it's, it's the bare necessity when you post and publish blog posts. If, if you don't have clear copywriting, if it isn't easy to read, then everything falls apart. You might think, well, I'm not a great writer, so shouldn't I do content marketing then? Well, yes, you should absolutely do content marketing. It's not about writing the next great prose of the world. It's not winning the Nobel Prize in literature, but it's about writing in a clear language. If I'm writing in English, make sure it is good English. No spelling mistakes, no grammar mistakes. Now, I might, this might be something you take for granted, but you often see these mediocre articles being passed off where just a simple editorial process would have saved them a lot of agony and would have helped the results much better. Because if I have an article which someone or a majority of people judge as not being qualitative enough, it's not of a good, as good quality as it should be, then that's going to reflect on me, my personal brand, and the business brand as well. And who wants that effort of actually writing an article to be hindered by the quality of the writing itself? And the other thing is, of course, learn to love your headings and headlines. It's really important. We scan on the web today. And there's no surprise that we scan on the web today. And our headings and headlines on the pages enables the reader to actually understand what we're saying. You could probably skip half of the article for most people who are just going to summarize and structurally read to see if you have something interesting to say. And then maybe if you do have something interesting to say, they're going to go into it. Now, something I'd say a majority of people, when they design blogs and they design news portals and they design content that's going to be published on a regular schedule, is they missing to point to other articles. Now, if I don't point to other articles, how do I expect someone to be able to find my posts? Right? It can't be done. So if I've gone through all the difficulties and problems to find a reader, who's interested in my post, aren't the chances pretty high that this reader is interested in other things I have to say as well? I think so. So point to other articles. Use internal linking. Now, someone in the SEO industry might, might put up their hands now and say, well, too much internal linking might be bad for SEO. Screw SEO right now. This is not for SEO purposes. This is for visitors, and that's why we do it. If we have keywords and vital words and phrases that are linked to other relevant pages on our site, whether it be pages, blog posts, whatever, that's going to create added value for the visitor. And we're going to engage them longer. They're going to stay on our site longer. They're going to trust us more and be more compelled to buy our services. And that is really where the key to content marketing is. It's not something we do with one article. So calls to our actions for articles is absolutely necessary and should definitely not be forgotten. But what should also not be forgotten, of course, is call to actions for businesses as well. What do I mean by a call to article action for businesses? Well, a call to action, of course, is, is going somewhere, doing something. And if I said have them to other articles, well, why shouldn't we have them for business as well? So if I'm selling something, 
intertwine in the blog post, add it at the end, add it in the side, whatever your layout permits, but we should make it easy for that user to go through and purchase or become a lead or whatever our conversion goal is. Remember, all we're using these articles for is trying to persuade the potential customer and the visitor to trust us enough to buy from us. So part one is why should we make it difficult for him or her to become interested in our company, that is, point to other articles so that they can start trusting us. And the second part, of course, is when they're ready to become a customer, why shouldn't they be easily able to become a customer? Place calls to actions everywhere and use them often, especially in your posts. Don't forget it. So the second part here is, is about reach. Now, conversion is brilliant, and if, if you don't get the conversion right, you're basically not going to be able to do all of these other things anyway because they're, it's going to be useless. But if we don't have reach, we're not going to get any people visiting our posts and seeing our posts. And if we don't have people seeing our posts, of course, we're not going to get any, any conversions anyway. So it's a bit of a moment 22 here. It's, it's, it's difficult. But when it comes to reach, we could talk for hours on this topic as well. But unfortunately, I don't have hours for this today. Remember your titles and remember the idea of long tail keywords in SEO. Now, for those of you who are a bit unsure of what long tail keywords are, it's basically a longer search phrase. You can say pretty much any search phrase starting with, how do I do X, Y, C? That's going to be a pretty long tail search. It's not that simple one keyword, but it's the multiple keywords in line. Use these because that's where you're at the end of the day, going to get the majority of your traffic to your articles. It's going to be really easy to get up there in search engines for these phrases if you just remember to do a little bit of research before you phrase that title. So you can be sure that the title actually matches um, with the keywords that people are searching for. And here's the kicker. How many of you publish a blog post and then leave it? never to revisit it again. How many have done that? Right? It's easy to publish something, as I said. It's difficult to maximize it. Now, what about your one-year-old article on long-tail keywords and how to use them? Is that still relevant today? Absolutely is. So why aren't we pushing it today? Right? It's an interesting question because we fail almost always to maximize the old content that we have in our archives. And unless you're a news organization posting timely, timely articles, this is really critical that you do. And you can do that through a number of, of, of methods. Uh, for reposting on social, um, social media, you could use either of these tools, for example. One's CoSchedule, which is a content schedule. Uh, a separate third-party app that lets you post to Facebook, Twitter, where, wherever, keep track of your blog posts, but it also lets you automatically fill up your social cues with archived content. Meet Edgar's doing pretty much the same in a slightly different way, but there are two tools to help you automatically reuse all of the post archives that you have so that you can actually continue to share and promote the content that you've written. You can make that content work for you in more ways than just ranking somewhere in an SEO keyword. And that's, of course, really vital and critical. Now, just keep in mind that you do might have some timely content. So don't do what I did, put all your content in here without looking almost twice, and then be surprised when now at the end of 2016, the article Web Design Trends that are coming up in 2016 gets published. You know, you actually have to look through your archives and find those one or two timely posts that may not be interesting two years from now. What you could get there is, however, a content idea. Maybe it's time to do that follow-up, actually. Now, the final part and, and the interesting part here is about analytics. And that is also really important, because what we have is we have the possibility today to actually be able to track everything that we're doing. And that's really exciting. And we've been saying this for years, of course, but we're still not taking full advantage of it. How many of you are in Google Analytics every single week tracking how your blogs and blog posts, your content, your website is performing? Maybe three or four people, as, as, to, you know, as far as I can see, in this room 
are saying they track it that often. So why aren't you? Well, it takes time. We simply don't build that routine. Now, there are three metrics that I think you should focus on to really create the engagement for your content and really have it work for you. And the first one is traffic sources, second, content success, and the third, campaign success. We're going to be tracking each three. So the first one, traffic sources, essentially is all about what medium is working for us. Is, is Facebook referring to us, Twitter, uh, another website, right? We need to track and see where, from which source is our traffic coming from. And the second is, of course, which content is doing well. Is the post about Web Design Trends 2016 doing really well? Is the post about API is doing really poorly? You know, evaluate the topics that seem to get your the most traffic. And once you know that, you can craft your way into some sort of editorial schedule and calendar and be a bit wiser to what you're publishing instead of randomly figuring out topics. And then, of course, the third one, campaign success. The important part here is to see what method of getting your traffic is working, be it my campaign of reposting my old content is working really well for me because that's driving a lot of traffic. Right? You want to be able to evaluate. So I'm saying you should repost your old content. Then maybe you figure out, well, that actually worked really, really well, and I have the stats to back it up. But since this is partly what works for you and what works for your specific use case, tracking it is, of course, vital to your content marketing success. So the more you track, the better off you're going to be. And we do this using campaign tracking. And we use campaign tracking in Google Analytics. And this is where I have the example from. And in Google Analytics, we use UTM tags, where we specify simply in clear, claim, clear text, plain text, um, what's going to show up in Google Analytics for campaigns, for sources, for traffic. And now, most of us don't use this when we're sharing content. We really should be building that into our routines, because that is what allows us to track these three parts um, that I've been talking about so far. So what I'm going to leave you with is an analytics. It's a lean analytics model. If you're interested, there are a great many books on the subject. One titled this exact phrase, lean analytics, which I invite you to read. It's about startup but it's highly relevant for every type of analytics scenario. And this is sort of the lean analytics model, which we're going to just adapt to website use. So we start at 12 o'clock. We have an idea, which we, in essence, build, i.e., we try it, we write a post. We get a result. We get a product. We get an article, whatever we get. And we then measure the performance of that. We measure to see what our idea, how our idea is performing. And then we get data from that, we learn from that, and we get another idea, which we build, which turns into a product, which we master. And the quicker we can spin this around, the quicker we can spin this lean analytics cycle and model around, the better we're going to be performing. And the quicker we can spin this around relative to our competitors, the greater of an advantage we're going to get in relation to them. So this is why it's really critical to adapt this mindset. It's not just about analyzing our posts, say, go into Google Analytics once every week. It's about actually doing something with the data, continuing the circle, and doing it as quickly as possible. So we've been talking about these three key areas. Now, there's a lot more to say about conversion about how to optimize content pages for conversion, for read, for analytics. But I think these items that I've been talking to you today about, they really represent some key areas that people aren't really doing right now, i.e. forgetting about their content and not actually fully immersing themselves in strategy for content marketing. When they're saying, oh, we're going to do content marketing, we're going to publish a post every week, and that's about it. Or maybe we're going to post it to our Facebook schedule page as well, or maybe Twitter as well. Right? That is content marketing. But take these other strategies and actually focus on these three key areas, and you can actually have those posts performing and working much better for you. So that's what I believe is definitely going to lead you more to um, content marketing success if you do it. So spend some time on your conversion, spend some time on the reach, get the SEO optimized, and then, of course, follow up with analytics and continue to be improving. Now, if you'd like to read more about these things or other topics revolving digital strategy, feel free to check out. I write every week, hey, content marketing, didn't I tell you? It can also be done from a stage at a conference uh, about this at 
the Bernstein Media Academy at the link right there. So with that, uh, thank you very much for um, coming to, to the session here today to, to WordCamp. Um, I hope you are going to have a really great day. Now, after me here on the stage, which is going to be in about nine minutes, uh, awesome to get a little extra time to stretch your legs, right? That is going to be, if you're interested in WordPress for big media, uh, you're going to want to remain in this room. But if you feel that advanced techniques for uh, testing, updating WordPress core and plugins is really more your thing. You're going to want to head over to the bar area, and that's all going to be starting in seven-ish minutes. So with that, thank you very much for, for coming here today. If you have any questions, I'm going to be around during the day, so just grab me and say, hey, I want to talk about something, uh, and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.